Hey, what's up everyone? BNGF Plus here. In today's video, I wanted to talk about a common problem in BeamNG Drive. If you're like me and you have a lot of mods installed, you'll find that every now and then a mod will conflict with a stock vehicle. In some cases, you'll notice an issue like this shortly after installing a mod, in which case it's pretty easy to go back and just uninstall the mod that you just installed. But in other cases, you might not notice the issue for some time, or the game will update, changing some of the game's files, causing mods to conflict with the stock vehicles. In these cases, it's very difficult to pinpoint the exact mod that might be causing the issue. In this video, I'm going to show you some strategies on how you can quickly find out which mod is causing a conflict. The first thing you'll want to think about is whether any changes have been made to the game since you've noticed the issue. For example, this could be if the game has updated, or if you've installed any new mods. If the game was recently updated, you should head on over to the BeamNG Mods repository to see if there's been any updates to the mods that you're using. Oftentimes game files are updated or changed, meaning that mod creators need to update their mods if they're referencing these files. This is why it's important for you to always keep your mods up to date. There's also always an update discussion thread on the BeamNG forums that you can check. It's a good idea to take a look here to see if anyone else has encountered any issues with other mods. A lot of times someone else will be having the same issue that you're having and may even post the solution in this thread. If you've checked that all of your mods are up to date and you're still not sure what's causing the issue, it's a good idea to come to your mods folder, which if you're not sure how to get to, you can double click on the BeamNG Drive launcher, click on Manage User Folder, open an explorer, and double click on your mods folder. This folder contains all of the mods that you currently have installed. I'd recommend that you sort it by date modified so that you can see the most recently installed mods at the top. Take a look through your list of recently installed mods and see if anything rings a bell that you may have installed since you started noticing the issue. Take a look at the dates as well and if you know approximately when the stock vehicle stopped working, you may want to try removing any mods that you installed since then. If you've already gone through these steps, or you're really not sure which mod is causing the conflicting issue, now let me show you a strategy for pinpointing the exact mod that's causing the problem. So with the game closed, let's create a folder on our desktop called Mods Backup. Now we'll open up our new folder, and we'll display it side by side with the actual Mods folder. What I want to do now is cut out some of these Mods files and put them into the Mods Backup folder. We're going to take approximately half of them and we're not going to copy this db file at the very top here. That file will always stay in the regular mods folder. So with about half of the mods selected, I'm going to right click and do a cut and then paste them into the mods backup. With about half of the mods remaining and the other half moved to the mods backup folder, we're now going to try launching into the game and we're going to try that farmhand vehicle again to see if it's working or if it's still broken. This is going to let us determine whether the conflicting mod is still in the mods folder or if it's part of the group that's been moved to the backup. You'll see what this means in just a moment, but let's first try out the vehicle and see where we're at. So as you can see, the farm vehicle is now working. Going back to our two folders, what this tells us is that the conflicting mod is not currently in the active mods folder. It means the conflicting mod is over here somewhere in the mods backup. To continue narrowing this down, we're going to close out of the game again. And in the mods backup folder, similar to what we did before, we're going to highlight about half of the mods. We're then going to do a right click cut and bring back about half of the mods into the active mods folder. We're going to run our test again by opening the game and checking if the vehicle is working or not. Again, if it's working, we know that there's still a conflicting mod in the mods backup folder, but if it's not working, it means that the mod was included in some of these mods that we brought back over. All right, so as you can see, we're back to a not working state. So let's flip back over to our folders and talk this through. This means that the conflicting mod is somewhere within these files that were just brought back into the mods folder. So for now, I'm gonna cut these back out and put them back into the backup folder. This also means that the remaining files that we had left in the mods backup folder down here should be okay because we've narrowed down that the conflicting mod is part of these highlighted files. 
We can test this by bringing over the files that we didn't bring over previously back into the mods folder and trying out the vehicle to make sure that it still works. As expected, we can see that the vehicle is still working. This confirms that the conflicting mod is definitely part of this group of files in the mods backup folder. While we still have a bit of work to do, just taking these couple of actions has already narrowed things down quite a bit. In the current mods folder, there's about 200 items containing mod files that we know are working. In the mods backup folder, we're down to just 73 items that may contain the conflicting mod. So if we close the game again and focus on these remaining 73 items, we're going to follow the same strategy where we're going to highlight about half of the mods, cut them, and bring them back over to the active mods folder. Alright, so this time's a little bit different. As you can see, after moving in this group of mod files, the vehicle is still working. So what this tells us is that the conflicting mod has not been moved back into the active mods folder and that the files that we just moved in are okay to leave there. So again, we're going to repeat the process and we're going to take about half of these files, cut them, and paste them into the active mods folder. You can see that it's now back to not working, but that's okay because again, that tells us where the conflicting mod resides. We know that it's somewhere within these files that were just brought over so we can bring them back out. And the small group of files that we didn't bring over, we know that there isn't a conflicting mod here, so we can cut those and bring them back in. You can see each time we do this, the list gets shorter and shorter. This is a process that you can continue repeating until you've narrowed it all the way down to just a couple of mods. As you can now see, I've narrowed it down to just one of two, and I'm going to just grab one of them, bring them back over to the active mods folder, and this for sure should tell us whether it is that mod that I just moved in, or if it's the remaining mod in the mods backup causing the issue. The vehicle does work with the last mod that we just moved in, so that all but confirms it that this one last mod over here on our mods backup is the one causing the conflict. We can confirm this just to be sure by moving it back into the active mods folder and trying it again. Just as expected, as soon as we move the file that we suspected was causing the issue back into the active mods folder, we can see the issue now reappearing. Moving that mod file back out of the active mods folder, you can see that the vehicle is now working again. So this is a process that I'll oftentimes go through when I'm really unsure which mod is causing a conflict. Hopefully it helps you out, and as always, thanks for watching, and I appreciate your feedback.